this is the Geekwinox. I'm Clint Ford. And I am John Beers. We are front-end developers for Collective Bias. Uh, we're starting a podcast that is going to address the technical issues of blogging and building websites. We're opening it up to take questions from the community of Social Fabric members. So we have a group set up in Social Fabric. Go there if you want to post a question and we'll talk about it. The group is called the Geekwinox in Social Fabric, just to clarify that. And we already have quite a few members. We need more, though. We do need more. One of them is Jessica Toothman, who is a blogger at millionmoments.net. We will put a link to her blog in the description. And, uh, yeah, she's a blogger. She's a, a photographer. She has product reviews and giveaways and recipes on her blogs. And uh, one of her recent recipes was actually a cake in a jar. Yeah, the cake in a jar was actually, I mean, I, I might go home and make this after I saw it. Um, it, it yeah, it's just one of those things that, I, I mean, you can take it anywhere. Yeah, it is. It's portable cake. It's a great idea. Yeah. I mean, we, we really enjoyed that Jessica got on there and, like, helped out and asked the first question. Yeah, she just, you know, she kind of came in and spoke up, said that she uh, she does want to take her blog to, you know, the next level as far as the uh, technical end, maybe get into a little bit of programming. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. It's kind of scary. It is, it is scary, but we'll get just a little bit. We'll start with the basics. Dun, dun. I wish I could cue up the, the theme song to Jaws right now. Oh, yeah, that's scary. So yeah, the first topic that we're kind of going to dive right into, um, and feel free to ask questions about anything that we go over inside the the group on Social Fabric, but the first topic we're going for is image optimization. So for when whenever you're working on your blog, you're looking to first gain a lot of followers, but also for the, the speed that your your page loads. So any website that you go to, it's you always end up getting frustrated if it takes a while to load. So one of the biggest things that you'll see a difference in is making sure that all the images on your site are sized correctly. Yes, and not only will that help your uh, your loading times, but also by keeping smaller file sizes. If you're self-hosting your blog, that will also save you money on hosting fees because you won't have to host as much. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that's uh, one thing to look at. And, um, yeah, resizing photos... If you take you know the raw image from your camera, you probably want to resize that before uploading it, and you can do that in uh, Preview on Mac, or there's a Paint.net is a good free one for Windows. There are plenty of options out there that are free, or you can if you already have Photoshop, you can use it. Yeah. One nice thing that you do have is uh, in most any of the modern browsers right now with either Chrome or Firefox, which if you're not using those, you should be. They both have things in them that allow you to see pixel width. So if you have a box that you're trying to figure out the exact size of your picture, you can just go in there, right-click on it, and you'll see Inspect Element. And that's, uh, like, that's the scary part. We're getting into a little bit of programming there. You will see the page code whenever you do that, but don't freak out. Just stay with it. Yeah, as long as you right-click on the area that you're in, you should be able to get a pretty good idea of the size of the box that you're looking at. So uh, we'll kind of go on from there. One of the things that we use a lot is a website called tinypng.org. It's kind of our saving grace. Yeah, it has a little panda. This panda is so freaking awesome he's just chewing his bamboo he's just really happy and uh if you drop a uh, a ping file into the browser what it does is it optimizes that so if you have transparencies in it like a, if you have a logo that's normally well where you will see that but yeah just drop it into uh tinyping.org we'll post a link to it as well and the panda he looks really happy. He gives you a big smile. Yeah, it's kind of like a little party after uh, he downsizes the image for you. He's doing all the work, and he's still celebrating with you at the end. So 
overall, it's just a it's an enjoyable tool to use, uh, and I mean we use it um, every day in our in our office. So it, it's it's something that we've kind of come to depend upon because um, it literally will save you almost half the file size on your on most of your images. Not guaranteeing that, but most of the time it will. Uh, so, what else we got? Yeah. All uh, right. So yeah, font selections. Font selections. When you're looking at the font selections for your blog, you you know you do want to find a font that is expressive of what your blog is about. But keep in mind accessibility and readability because not everyone who goes to your site will have the same high monitor resolution or even as good of eyesight as you. So by making sure they're clear, readable fonts, it just makes it better for everyone, even people who can read really like fancy cursive fonts. Uh, it's still more taxing to do so than it is if it's just a, you know, more. No, I'm not saying just use sans serif because there are some good serifs out there. No, yeah, there there are definitely plenty of good fonts. Just don't go too crazy. Um, try to kind of at least with a majority, especially if it's like your readable content. All of your text and stuff like that, you really need to to work towards getting it sized correctly with the right fonts, so that I mean, you don't want people to miss out or or have their eyes strained from reading from reading your blog. I mean, we're, we're all trying to keep as many viewers as possible on your guys' blogs. So anything that we can do to help, we might we'll also probably end up providing some sort of list of fonts that we regularly use for our blogs. Yeah, there are, there are a couple of uh really good collections of uh, Google fonts that, and I would recommend Google fonts as well because, you know, then anyone will see the web page the way you see it. You don't have to worry about what fonts they have installed on their computer. Yeah. Yeah, that is one thing. Um, wh if you're using a very specific font that you've either downloaded online through like a free font library or something like that, and that's the one that you're using for your site, if if someone doesn't have that same font that you have on there, and then they go and uh, view it from theirs, they're gonna see it in whatever was declared before that, kind of as the fallback font. So if if you're trying to space something perfectly, or or you're trying to do something with the wrong size or like a a larger size font, if it changes back, you might run into something like definitely like readability issues where that that content section now is completely unreadable or they can't read your titles or you just end up missing out on a lot yeah and you know part of the part of what we're talking about now does come down to preference of what let's say what font styles you want but one thing that does always count is whenever you set whatever font you choose make sure the color of the font has a high enough contrast from the background color behind it Definitely. Yeah, so, I mean, using anything that kind of is, like, same color palette that kind of blends in is always a no-no. Um, no one wants to sit there and try to decipher what they're reading or highlight the text to be able to read it, so. Yeah, and there are uh, guides that they have set up for, if you're wondering now if you have enough difference between your font and your background color, one thing that I use is the Juicy Studio Luminosity Color Contrast Analyzer. That's a lot to say, but we will post a link to it. And then uh, once you get on JuicyStudio.com, you'll see that there's a space you can put your text color and your background color. And if you're not sure what those values should be, we go back to Inspect Element. Mm -hmm. To reiterate what we had said earlier... If you go back, you right click on, say you highlight the font, right click on it, click inspect inspect element, and from there you should see a hex value, which is the pound sign within up to six letters or numbers afterwards, and that it will be three or six. Yeah, three or six, um, and that that just kind of is how your browser decides, and it's the, the universal code for colors. So this has kind of been, uh, you know, it's been the first. It's been our first run through of this show, uh, but I'm I'm pretty excited about it. I think there's a lot of potential here to uh, to help out. Mm -hmm. Well, definitely. Uh, as you, as you guys get more questions, we can definitely kind of dive into extreme specifics with 
any of the problems you guys have encountered over the last couple of years working with your own blogs. So, Yeah, I mean, we have kind of hit a very uh, surface level here. So whenever we figure out what specifics uh, would help you the most, that's what we're going to dig into. This is John. And this is Clint. Let's have some fun times together. Bye, friends. Bye.